uh, we were taking a look at the USADA or anti-doping program and thought, you know, it's unfortunate that every time I'm up here talking, it's typically bad news if somebody is tested positive. And the reality is there's so much good news that comes out of this program, both what we've done with the UFC and I think MMA uh, in general. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as waking up every day and making the decision that I'm not using steroids to be compliant under this program. Um, our fighters have to watch everything that goes into their body, whether it's medications prescribed by doctors, definitely dietary supplements. Letting you start to know where you can be tested at all times. And Cowboy Cerrone is a perfect example of that. I mean, you've all seen what his life is like, but he's always consistently updating so that USADA knows where to test them. You and Donna call me. Exactly. Well, there's a few <laughs> reminders going out there. Um, so Cowboys reached uh, the 50 test plateau. What I think is really cool about this, in fact, I talked about it with Schmo and Helen on, on their podcast this week, is what I'm seeing is the trickle-down effect of this program throughout MMA. I'm regularly contacted by other promotions fighters, whether on the lead, uh, regional or local scene or, you know, bigger promotions that want to get to the UFC me and say, look, I want to get there within, you know, months or years. What do I need to do now to be successful when I get there? And so you're seeing that trickle down effect um, of our program. I, I think I think DC put it the best when when he got his 50 uh, times jacket recently. He said, look, this will probably go in the back of my closet. But someday when my kids, you know, see that back there, maybe even my grandkids and ask me what that is, um, I can tell them, that that's a symbol of me doing things the right way. And certainly, you know, you're looking at a legend inside the octagon here, surefire Hall of Famer. Uh, but what he's doing, being a leader and setting an example outside of this, not just for UFC, but all of MMA, um, deserves recognition. So, Cowboy, we got you your, uh, your 50 tests. Your Letterman uh, jacket here. Come on. Uh, so congratulations and thank you for being a leader and setting a great example for everybody, my man. Appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thought I was getting some boots. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's a nice fit. There you go. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see if there's any questions, Cowboy, real quick. Oh, okay. Question, anybody? No, no. Yeah. So, was it worth it for the jacket? No, it's worth it to keep fighting, right? I guess if you cheat, you don't get to fight anymore. So, I don't know. I just don't cheat. I don't do anything. So, just hard fashion, old fashioned work. I don't know. I just never understood. I remember, which is even weirder, when I was first at Jackson's, all the guys that were there had like a little thing they were doing. And I told them, I don't want to be part of that because I don't ever want when they do test one day to be not able to do that anymore. So I just stuck with my guns and old fashioned hard work, man, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, they know now, like, because my ranch, it's, like, blocked off. So they have to, like, walk quite a distance, and then they bang on the door. like So they usually would get treated with guns. <laughs> you know, if someone's banging on your door at night. One time I had a guy at 11 o'clock at night, one night, and then 6 o'clock in the morning the next morning. So when someone's beating on your door at, like, 11 o'clock at night, first of all, you can't get into the ranch, and then they're there. So they usually get met with a gun, and they're like, oh, we're just sorry. Because they can't call you, right? They can't let you know they're there. So it, uh... But now I have the same guys that he knows. It's, it's all good now. We got it figured out. Don't shoot. <laughs> so, yeah. Good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.